Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about the Windows Communication Foundation, or you might think of it as how to make REST services with an ASP.NET app. So Windows Communication Foundation, WCF, is the communications tool that Microsoft has provided to us as C-sharp programmers. And so we're going to go through an overview of some of the features and some of the things that we need to know about. And in the following video, we're going to code a demonstration using a REST service. So first of all, when you think of WCF, think of a service application. That's the terminology we're talking about, is that one app provides a service to another app. So for example, you can provide data points and you can provide endpoints and one communications channel will open up to another. So for example, let's say you saw this URL. It says, give me all users with the name of Tom. And so you might send that to a server that has a REST service associated with it. Well, that endpoint then is something that the server responds with. And so you can see the example at the bottom. It says, hey, I found Tom. He's age 32 and he weighs 192 pounds. And so that's what a, a REST service would look like. So WCF is all about communication between services in different applications. So an endpoint can be continuously, continuously available, or it can be just inside an application. So application to application or internally. They're both going to be true. Now the data format that you probably associate most of all with these WCFs is this here. This is JSON formatted data. And so the, the, the format is very, very easy to read. You can see that this is a, some kind of an event that was successful. It tells me about the data that was received and who the person was. Now here's a URL where we can test out a REST API example. So let's go see what it looks like. So here's the website that I was just referring to. So if we were to pick one of these guys down here, let's uh, just choose this one, the first one. And you can see that it shows us we have a whole bunch of employees. So this says, give me all employees. Let's see what some of the other ones are. So let's check the second one. It says, give me an employee. I'm gonna choose uh, employee number 12, for example. I'll just type in 12. And we can see that Quinn Flynn is number 12. Let's see, let's try another one. Let's try 15. And so now we have a different person, whoever that might be. And so this is the idea of, of having a service that other applications can use. Obviously, this is not the format that you want most of your data to show up to your end user in. This is meant to be digested by an application that can format it into a nice table or a graph or a game or some other feature. But the idea is that JSON data is the glue that sticks together applications that are services and applications that are clients. There are other types of formats available, but uh, we'll probably see JSON more than anything else. So let's go back in here to the presentation and we can continue on now. So the characters that you might see in a REST service or a communication service between one another come in different formats. Two of the most common are this one here, JSON, which we've already looked at, and XML, which is called extensible markup language. So XML is used in a lot of configuration files that you do in your applications like Visual Studio or Android Studio. Uh, you can also pass data between applications using XML. It used to be the thing, XML, and now JSON has pretty much taken over as far as the market share, you might say, of the uh, type of communications going on. So REST service is usually what we think of but there's also another one called SOAP. So associate SOAP with XML, associate JSON with REST, and you kind of got the idea. Look at this uh, two charts here. In the early days, when we had Web 1.0, we had applications that would serve up pages, and everyone learned how to do HTML. So I don't know, this was the year 2000 or the late 90s or something. And then people gradually got the idea, or maybe quite suddenly got the idea that, hey, once you've been to a static website, uh, you're probably never gonna come back. However, if you have a service where you have ongoing data and you have published things like weather reports and scores and news articles, instead of trying to create a new web page each time, we just connect it to a database. Well, databases work best if you have a service that kind of loosely couples your app 
using a REST service. And so that was called Web 2.0, which was a dramatic change in how web services works. So what can you stick together with WCF? What kind of clients and servers are, are there? Well, you can pretty much look at the list here and say, everything to everything. And that is the universal language, you might say, between services. WCF is where you would think of as where the back end meets the front end. So the left side of the screen here shows a layout. So this is the front end designer, worried about HTML, CSS, maybe some JavaScript. The back end designers are over on the right side. Their primary tool is database, database, database. Now, if you wanna make those two work together, you're gonna to need a service. So if you were to think of the right side being an application written in C-sharp, and then the left side, it wouldn't have to be written in C-sharp. You could write this application in React and JavaScript. You could write it in a mobile app. You can think of really two different separate applications altogether. Now, in ASP.NET, in C-sharp, you can build the entire framework from back end to front end, all in one language. But it's not usually done that way. A lot of people would split the work in half. So you have a front end team doing their work and their specialty, and the back end team doing their coding and their specialty. And so a lot of jobs that you find would fit one or the other, and of course there's probably people that do both. So let's talk about a list of some of the features that you get out of WCF. Now I've already referred to this, but service orientation apps, or SOA is what you would call this, is where you would have a service that says, hey, I'm going to get you all users and display them in the JSON format. And so one web, web application talks to another. A second one is interoperability. So if you look at this, you might think of the database on the left and the gadgets on the right. So on the right side, we see all this collection of odd apps. We have robots, we have web apps, we have mobile apps. Think of this as the internet of things. Everything out there has a communications protocol. So your refrigerator can alert you what temperature it is. You can look at your doorbell and see who's outside. You can take any device out there and put in a small chip and for a few $10 or so you can make it into a smart device. Well, all of those communications have to happen over some kind of a channel. And so WCF or JSON and REST services, we might say, are really the glue that's going to put those two sides together again. Let's talk about multiple message patterns. So not everything is a two-way street. Sometimes people just broadcast a message. Sometimes we're just subscribers. So think of like your podcast. So the person that's publishing their podcast is going to be sending the data out there and anyone that wants to subscribe to it can. But there's really no confirmation to say, hey, I got your message and thank you and now let's close the, close the communications. No, it's really a one-way thing and there's no expectation for someone to respond. But in most cases, you, you would probably have internally a, a, a two-way street. So we're gonna see some code in just a moment. In the next video, we're gonna actually code up a REST service and uh, we're going to be using what's called data contracts. So these are, these are going to be interfaces and then we're going to uh, put little no notifications in front of each of the classes that use these and so that will help us in our coding. So hang on to those details in just a minute. We'll see that in the next video. Number, uh, the last one here perhaps is security. So just because you can provide this service to the world doesn't mean you necessarily should. So a lot of data that you're trying to trade between services is confidential. So we want to encrypt it, first of all, if it's going across the wire. And the second is we want to be able to authenticate the people and the devices that are connecting to it. And so we're going to have that ability to lock down certain things that we want to publish and to make them available in other cases to the public. Also, you would think of that HTTP is usually the language of the internet. Well, it's not the only one. There are, there are thousands of different types of protocols. But you can use some of the other types of protocols as well, such as named pipes, TCP, or others. So your language of choice is not limited to just web traffic. Now, also think of AJAX and REST. That's probably the most uh, common thing. And so that's the exact example that we're going to be coding in just a few minutes. Now, if you were to look at the stack, if you were a full stack designer and you look at the, all the features that are available in uh, .NET, and we talk about n-layer web design. 
So we're trying to separate one function from another. Where are we on the chart now when we're talking about WCF? Well, the answer is we're down here in the center. Do you see where it says uh, this part here called business service layer? So data transfer between one and the other. So it says here in this, in this section called COM foundation. So that's the communication foundation. That's the WCF. So linking the database to the presentation layer. Now let's talk about specifically the most common use of this is web services called REST services. So a web API. A web API is available from companies that have all kinds of data and they want the public to be the consumer. So Blogger, Books, Calendar, Drive, Google+, almost everybody that has a public-facing application has API services so that developers can create their own version of whatever data they want to show. So what is REST? Well, REST does not mean like restful, like sleepy. It means representational state transfer. It just means this is the coding language for sending data from one to the other. You should realize that this is stateless, so that way it doesn't require that any information is uh, retained from one communication event to the other. So it kind of like forgets about everything that was said before. We're starting a new conversation every time that we send data. Also, we would think of the uh, abilities of REST. Can, what can you do with it? Well, you can do everything that you would do with a normal database transaction, the CRUD operations. You can create, read, update, and delete. Also, think about the protocols that have come through the past. So in the ancient days of mainframe computers, we had things called remote, remote procedure calls. You can still do that today, of course, but uh, it's not the, the primary thing that most people think of. Uh, SOAP was the XML service that was provided in the 90s, and uh, REST kind of picked up in the year 2000s and to the present. Also think about uh, what we're going to do ahead of us. So this video here is intended for students at Grand Canyon University, where I'm a professor, and if you'd like to enroll there, that'd be great. If you're already a student, this is what we're going to be doing. In our milestone ap application that's going to follow soon, we're going to create a back-end service, and we're going to tie it to a project that we're working on with a game. So we're working on Minesweeper, and the feature that we want to do is create a Save Game button. And so when we click the Save Game, it's going to create a JSON-type data and serialize it. So we're going to take all of the properties of our game and uh, make them into a JSON object. And then we're going to uh, save that into our database. So here's what our game might look like. It'll have the name, it'll have the time, it'll have the uh, difficulty level, and then it'll have the status of every single square on our grid. So it'll be a, an array of grid, uh, type grid, I guess you call it, type cell. And so we're going to be working on that in the future, so we'll save that for another video. But just let you know that we're going to use WCF to make that happen. So here's some more code that we're probably going to have to make in the future. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So the milestone, that's what we're going to work on. But let's get to the activity next to see if we can make a simple REST service and uh, make it work with uh, ASP.NET.